the audited parameters principles of clinical auditing types of audit conduct of surgical audit value of audit disadvantages and limitation of the audit and then we conclude what will be the result in my own ward we used to do surgical audit every month so it is the systematic critical analysis of the quality of the surgical care now see it is the critical analysis of the quality of the surgical care that is reviewed by peers against explicit criteria or recognized standards and then used to further inform and improve surgical practice with the goal of improving the quality of the care of the patient so the aim result is to improve the quality of the care of the patient it is the process by which group of pro, groups of professionals agree upon the required levels of excellence in practice monitor whether they are being achieved and then resolve deficits found it covers all aspects of surgical care including procedures used for the diagnosis and treatment the use of resources and the resulting outcome and the quality of the life of the patient so the purpose is to bring about improvements in clinical practice and the patient outcome so what is audit i think you must understand that what is audit so whatever we have done surgically we have to look on that data and then if it is possible to compare our own data with the international data to get the results so why it comes in the surgeon's mind that we need audit it is and what has really excited the surgeon so this existed since antiquity reference to similar concept seen in the edwin smith papaya that is 2000 bc modern surgical auditing begins with groves in 1908 and ernest in 1912 who independently reported systems of reporting outcomes of surgical care in 1912 american college of surgeons reported the need to standardize hospitals and they set five minimum standards now the aims are to identify ways of improving and maintaining the quality of the care of the patient to assist in continuing education of the surgeon to help make the most of the resources available for the provision of the surgical services a very simple example for example in our theater operating theater emergency operating theater and elective operating theater we are operating and by surgical audit we saw that the patients whom we are operating in emergency operating theater have more chances of wound infection as comparative to the patients whom we are operating in the main operating elective operating theater so we concluded that there is such some problem there in emergency theater which results into the more wound infection then we further tried to get the reasons of those infections and we got the result that the problem either is in the patient patient who is coming in emergency is not immunologically well enough to be here or there because of the overburden of the patients the emergency operating theaters are not really sterilized as much as elective theaters so these are basically the advantages of the audit uh, that you identify bad practice reduces unnecessary investigations medications and treatment decrease length of admission now for example a patient 22 year old is going through serum electrolytes in elective surgeries and in the end of the day we conclude that a patient who is on the elective list is not vomiting is not having diarrhea there is no need of doing unnecessary serum electrolytes so this is the conclusion of the audit but the same serum electrolytes we need in emergency patients because these patients may be nil per oral for long time may be vomiting may be un- passing much stools or less stools so this is the basic advantage of the audit decrease length of the admission allows continuous refinement of the treatment modalities allows objective assessment of the quality of the care improves efficiency and guides resource allocation 
improved education training and feedback healthy computation now for example one hospital is showing that the conversion of laparoscopic procedures to open procedure ratio is 6% and if i think in my healthcare system the conversion is 10% so i will think of so and i will try to make that 10% less than 6% so that is known as healthy competition this is a very good advantage of the audit what are the types of the audit it could be a retrospective or concurrent concurrent or prospective same thing it could be an individual based unit based hospital based state based regional based national or international now do you know the difference between audit and the research what is audit and what is research now audit to um, to inform delivery of the best care and in research to produce generalizable new knowledge it means you are innovating certain new things in audit measures against a already predetermined standard but in research you have to test a hypothesis you have to make certain null hypothesis and then you prove or disprove that in audit it usually involves analysis of the already existing data or simple questionnaire but in research it usually involves collection of new data that is additional investigation in audit there is no allocation of the patients every patient which comes in your ward or your um, institute you have to op operate or you have to give treatment but in research you have you patients may be allocated to test and control group so there is a one group in which you are doing certain thing and another group which you are not doing certain something and then you compare in audit there is no randomization but in research there are chances of having randomization also in audit only used to assess modalities currently in the use now rem remember we are not innovating any new thing in audit we are just assessing our results from the previously innovated things but in research used to assess new or experimental modalities now the principles are objectivity honesty for example i converted four laparoscopies to open but i just write down two that i only converted two so you see honesty is very important accurate and standard forms are available for documentation complete medical records are important all that happened to the patient results of the investigation post operative notes follow up and if patient died then autopsy findings and records should be filled in an accessible manner again principles are same for every good thing confidentiality patient privacy relevance to common clinical problems clear standards set by the peer assessment peer means a group of surgeon another surgeon is my peer education not punishment now you see many people think कि अगर मैंने ऑडिट में ये बता दिया तो मेरे लिए गड़बड़ हो जाएगी नाउ यू सी ऑडिट इज नॉट फॉर द पनिशमेंट ऑडिट इज फॉर द एजुकेशन सो दैट इन फ्यूचर यू मे नॉट मेक द सेम मिस्टेक और यू कैन इम्प्रूव योर स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ केयर बाय डूइंग सर्टेन चेंजेस इन योर ट्रीटमेंट सो ऑडिट शुड लीड टू अप्रोप्रिएट एक्शन एक्चुअली नाउ देर आर सर्टन पैरामीटर्स फॉर द ऑडिट दैट इज टाइम यूटिलाइजेशन cost effectiveness mortality morbidity assessment now every good hospital every good unit of the hospital have a monthly mortality morbidity meeting so that to assess whether our in my ward what type of procedure is we are doing most commonly and what type of complications we are seeing most commonly so quality of the diagnostic services monitoring of the performance assessment of newer technologies surgical outcome knowledge of patient satisfaction and legal implication of the surgery so audit we can do audit on the structure audit on the process and audit on the outcome so structure ki audit kaise hogi it is concerned with amount and type of the resources available for example you have 20 beds in your ward and patients coming and 20 beds are filled you cannot admit the patient 
so it is really very important that whether you have laparoscope in your operation theater or not and you are doing open cholecystectomy but it is your not it is not your problem it is the problem of the structure so it is concerned with the amount and the type of the resources available number of the hospital beds staff numbers nurses to the patient ratio theater suits wards equipment easy to measure does not necessarily correlate with quality or effectiveness of the care now how you do the audit of the process it is concerned with the amount and type of the process carried out means time utilization time to surgery operating time down time what is the difference between these different times it means when you first received patient in emergency how much time you get to resuscitate that patient to allow that patient to come to the operation theater then how much time you utilized in operating the patient then how much time you take to make the patient comfortable and shift to the patient to the ward back so this all is very very important more relevant than audit of the structure i for example a patient who is in the emergency and you have to resuscitate in 2 hours instead of that you took 4 hours you take took 6 hours and that results in the bad results of the patient outcome so identifies problems in surgical practice and proper and proper solutions can be difficult to quantify really now the last is the audit of the outcome it's the most relevant indicator of the quality of the care now it is the intra and the post operative mortality success rate morbidity wound infection specific complication rate reoperation rate duration of the hospital stay readmission rate um, rate cost of care long term survival and quality of life can be difficult to measure or quantify it really requires educated long term follow up sometimes surgeons don't favor this long follow up and sometimes you see this long follow up does not always tell the whole story so this is the audit cycle if you start with the first step determine the scope then select the standards then collect the data then present and interpret its results with the peer review and then in the end you have to make certain changes and monitor then the progress that whatever changes you have done is really making good for the patient's care or not so these are the five steps which are very very important so to determine the scope should be clearly defined it is time bound easy to measure relevant to the performance and the outcome selection of these standards is very difficult clear cut standards for what is considered acceptable clinical practice for example in western countries they don't give antibiotics for clean cases but here in our part of the world we have to give antibiotics sometimes only for the prophylaxis sometimes even after surgery because of certain poor standards of sterilization around the world so should be evidence based relevant to local trends and that is the local trend that in our part we have to prescribe antibiotics relevant to specialty and types of the patient see should define adverse events and should define sentinel events how you collect the data it's a source of information you have to identify the relevant information you have to assess accuracy of the data that data is it correct and then is there any need to modify the data and determine the minimum acceptable quantity of the data you see you, it is difficult to fill the big form so try to make the data at the minimum level now then interpretation of the results results should be presented regularly that I, as i said monthly in my ward but can by annually at higher level results are evaluated by the peers that is other surgeons or other centers results should be compared to those of the similar centers and surgeons we cannot compare our results with john hopkins hospital 
we have to compare with this with those centers who are of, of the same standard all sentinel events must be reviewed quality issues should be identified peer review is a learning process not for the punishment or it's not bragging it's dragging now after that we have to take appropriate actions so you, we have to make some recommendations and we have to make certain changes to make uh, based on those audit findings now staff should be educated on reasons behind each change and then we have to take follow up also that whatever we have done the recommendations and whatever we have done the changes we are following that or not so in this way audit cycle should be repeated to assess the effects of the changes now you see for everything there are certain disadvantages also so take considerable time and effort highlight bad practice and bad doctors sometimes exposes doctors to punitive action does not always tell the full story pointless if no ability to make changes promotes reliance on protocols and guidelines about clinical judgment now computers in the clinical practice the availability of computers has significantly changed the process of surgical audit you see sometimes we give incentives to our juniors to record all the cases in the form of there are so many forms for example in the form of the coupons advantages easy storage and analysis of the large amount of the data we can put in the computer and disadvantages are translating and entering data to usable formats stuff need to be trained and you know full time electricity is important which is sometimes difficult in our part of the world now future trends are electronic medical records local experience very little audit, audit at individual and hospital levels morbidity and mortality meetings may um, happens in many hospitals little training or emphasis on the audit poor and inconsistent data gathering punitive mentality and this all is because of punitive mentality everybody thinks that this is for the punishment this is not for the improvement so i can summarize that surgical audit is a continuous quality improvement process which systematically reviews surgical care against explicit criteria to guide the implementation of the changes and in the end of the day to make a good patient care a better patient care it is a non punitive educational process aimed at improving the outcome of the patient this is not for the punishment of the surgeon locally relevant criteria should be compared against appropriate local standards to guide resource allocation surgical practice and decision making so a good surgeon must never hide his or her faults wo kehte hain na galtiyon se hi insaan seekhta hai to galti batana zyada achhi baat hai ban nisbat chhupane ke but should learn from them in order to better serve his patients and improve his practice kya matlab hua ki galti ko aadat nahi bana lena hai galti ko sudharna hai 